Well, good afternoon, students. Good afternoon. First of all, congratulations with the new academic year. Congratulations that you chose the field of economics, which you're all proud of. Okay, I, I believe and I'm very, very sure that you made a good choice. Because economists have many tools that other fields of studies do not have. Okay? So my name is Bilal, family name is Buzuruku. I joined this university three years ago, and it, this is the third day I'm teaching this module, Contemporary Issues in Global Economics. Okay? So now, briefly, I will give you some introduction to this module. What are we going to do? What should we do? And how do we do it? All right, and I'll give you all the guidance, and we will talk about the first lecture, Globalization Today. And please, hopefully by the end of the semester we will be able to cover 10 topics, all right? If you pay attention, all of them are very, very different in their nature, okay? If you want to learn each topic in all detail, okay? One book, you know, is not sufficient to cover everything, all right? Very good. But we should read in one another. Good? Okay. So, after this week, we will have one week revision week and in class test. After test week, then it's is going to be 12 week teaching week. We will have revision, okay? So those things will be in the top. Okay. So today we'll talk about the revision. Good. I went to the library and cross-checked every book. Which one you can use? And I picked up these ones, okay? And I used the information from these books, all right? These books are all available, available from our library. But the numbers are limited, all right? There is only one book, I think it was this one, all right? Contemporary Labor Economics, which is only available, only one which is, I have it. Okay, it's not now available in the library. So, I think it is uh, lecture five. We will talk about labor migration, all right? I will use some uh, contents of this book, and that time I will scan those papers and upload it to the internet. You can read it, okay? No problem. Good. These books, you have to rush to the library. Good. Next. Let's have one, one globalization. So now let's start the all right? If you have any other questions, you can go to my office, all right? For this hour. So, globalization, winners and losers. I think you are very familiar with this word, globalization. Okay? Globalization is everywhere. If you turn on the TV, you hear about this one. If you uh, open that any news media from uh, internet, you see that globalization. Globalization is everywhere. So, but it causes winners and losers. All right? So today we will discuss what is globalization and who are the losers and winners. Good. Look, as individuals, as individuals, when do we feel to be like winners? When we achieve something, right? At least if we feel happy from our performance, yes? If you get, you know, that your expected mark from my module, you are the winner. You feel that way, right? Economy also, you know, runs that way. So there are winners and losers. Okay, winners. If the winners, when we say, you know, globalization causes that particular country, country to accumulate as much wealth as possible. Okay? Wealth. So globalization causes that country to become rich. All right? Which causes, if you are rich, if you have financial, you know, all resources, it means you can be developed easily because you have access to buy all the technology, whatever you want, okay? And if there is development, if you are wealthy, it means that it is an indication of what? Healthy life, all right? Prosperity. And just opposite is poverty. Globalization, it is not, you know, always good. In some countries like China and India, they reached that type of you know, economic growth. They became so strong economically because of globalization. There are many other countries, including some of them in sub-Saharan countries, okay, which are you know, affected negatively. 
poverty level increased compared to other years. Economic development is now stagnating, not good. Hard life is very difficult. Hard, okay? If we, we always as economy we think about wealth, 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 right? And what's the best measure of nation's wealth? GDP, yes. GDP, yes. GDP is the best measure. GDP is the best measure. You may question GDP, yes, GDP per capita, maybe it's the indication you know, we can compare. Plus, well, what about some you know, average wage or some other data? Okay. We say GDP is the best measure. It is the only economic indicator which is available for all countries. Okay? Average age for some countries is available, but for many it's not. Okay? So therefore GDP per capita is a very good measure. For you. At the end of this slide, okay, which I am not going to talk about today, which is going to be for your home reading, you have to read everything in detail, and I will ask you questions about the real GDP, nominal GDP, GDP, PPP, everything in seminar. Okay? Good. And I'm saying that GDP per capita is the best measure. But this measure has lots of shortcomings. Okay? It has lots of shortcomings, even though it's the best. So this is your homework. Go home, open your computer, search. What are the problems associated with GDP per capita? Please make some readings and I will ask you during the seminar. Okay? Good. This, it is already uploaded, you don't have to take a note if you want. Good. Globalization. There are many definitions of globalization, okay? And this is one of them. What is globalization? So globalization is interaction, okay? Communication. So first interaction comes. Then integration comes. Among people, among companies, firms, and governments. Okay? And those communication or integration, okay, those is driven by what? International trade, international investment, and international migration. Alright? Those three tools are, you know, the drivers of globalization. So I'm saying here, yeah, this process has effects on environment, on culture, on political system, blah, blah, blah. Yes? Globalization has effect on all of these and plus many others. Good. If I ask you a question from this classroom, there are so many students. Thank you very much for attending. Okay. If I ask you, so you know, for example, let's say I'm Tajik nationality, Uzbek nationality, we have Russian nationality, Korean nationality, and some other nationality students here, right? International university. And just ask yourself whether there is any single student in this room who is traditionally close. Is there any? There isn't any student who is wearing traditional clothes here. Why? Because it's, it's the influence of what? Globalization. Now we are all Western type of clothes, wearing Western type and we are very proud. We should not do. Okay? Regarding environment, we will discuss it, all right, how does it depend on the environment, on political system, it affects, okay? So, therefore, if you want to become, you know, one of the, you know, all acknowledged good country in the world, become more open. So now, your new president, our president, Shaka Prezir, what is what he's doing? Now, one strategy is using is to become more open to the world. So now people are recognizing us. Okay? Which is good thing. Good. So look, glo globalization, it exists for many years, for centuries, okay? Since, you know, people, you know, were in this too, those, you know, people, they used to at least try to live in a better place, right? Close to water, they looked for, you know, fertile land they, where they could grow good vegetables and you know, fruits. So, which means they were either spreading around, yeah? So now we are not talking about those historical facts, but we will talk about recent ones. All right? First, one, industrial revolution in Europe 
from 1870 to 1914. So you know, by that time, by the end of you know that uh, 1870s, the entire globe was separated, okay, or just you know allocated to those superpowers: British Empire, French Empire, Russian Empire, right? It was just belonged to those empires. Good. And what did they do? Were they, you know, just conquering those places and just living alone? No, right? Just if you take an example of Australia, do you know that country? I believe you do. Okay. So Australia, when British, they, you know, in they invaded that 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 um, continent. Okay. There were indigenous people. Okay, many indigenous people were killed. Blah blah blah. And what was the purpose, you know, of using that island first? Oh, sorry, that that place. The British people they use it like, like a prison. Okay, all British criminals who were, you know, convicted for certain type of crime, they were sent to Australia. And they were keeping them there, just keep them away from our mainland. Later on, after a few years, what, what did they discover? They discovered gold and certain, you know, expensive and mineral resources, okay? Then other British people, they moved. Will you move to a place, you know, where, you know, the situation is not good, the infrastructure is not good? You will not, right? The ones who moved, what did they do? They tried to establish good infrastructure. They try to bring technology, their culture, okay? So they will live as they used to live in the UK. So that way, British culture spread in Australia, okay? Now, it's hardly difficult to say, you know, that which country is that living in Australia, they are living in the best. Okay? And why did they do it? Just for the sake of raw materials and so on, okay? British did. British, for example, uh, Indians, they were supplied with, uh, with tea and some other you know, minerals. Chinese were supplied to other countries, some other, other stuff. And these things happened. Second, what happened in 1914? First, first, first World War. So, First World War started, right? Germans were not agreed, they disagreed with the allocation of the you know, whole countries. And that war started because of some reasons, which is outside of the topic. Look, look, after that First World War, the First World War, and until the end of Second World War, it was the time of uncertainty, okay, regarding globalization, uncertainty. And in 1945, in after the end of World War, trade among countries was, you know, almost zero, okay. Only some allies countries, they will try to trade with one another. Trade was suffering uh, because of that war condition, all right? So then, American government, they did one very smart strategy. What did they do? Okay. Their entire world community leaders, all right? So let's come together and discuss this issue. And they had that Bretton Woods meeting in 1945 in the United States, okay? And there, they agreed to, again, reestablish trade between countries. They made the United States, the U.S. dollar, world currency at that time. We will talk about this issue later, all right? And then, after two years, in 1947, they established GATT, GATT, okay? General Agreement on Trade and Tariffs. All right, world WTO today. That way, trade started spreading everywhere. Trade is very good thing, okay? And that way, globalization was moving. People were using the drinking Coca-Cola everywhere after that one, okay? Chewing American gums or wearing, you know, Chinese shoes. That happened. Then, the most recent one from 1980 to present day, revolution in telecommunication. You know, in mid-1980s, you know, that the smartphones, or sorry, cell phones were in the, 
right? Internet was introduced, okay? Transportation system reached its highest level. Airplane, whatever. We have now all types of transportation. What's the difference between transportation of today and uh, you know, many years ago? More comfortable. More comfortable, yes, it's, it's speedier, More. right? The main factor is cost, okay? Now you can travel from the United States, from here to the United States using maybe $2,000, let's say. But if you want to travel from here to the United States 100 years ago, maybe $1,000 were not enough, let's say. Okay? It was too difficult. Whether you will read that map, it was a big question. Okay? And because of all those you know, developments in IT, okay? International capital flow increased. Investment from one continent to another. So now if you want to transfer any amount of money to any part of the world, one trip is sufficient. Okay? What about people? How was it? If you want to take a few billions of dollars from in one ship to another continent, right? You have to go there with some, you know, thousands of you know, the other guards you know, uh, together. Whether you will read that land is a big question too. Because there were many pirates, yes, too dangerous. Today we don't have those pirates except those hackers, right? Still we have pirates. Okay. Is globalization good or bad? Now we will discuss. Globalization usually we, we always think positive. Okay? Then we will see negative sides too. Good. First one, let's talk about good sides of globalization. So it is very good environment for business, all right? If we are open to globalization, we open our gates to international trade. We welcome investment, all right? And we do not you know, push back foreigners. So it, ha if it happens, for example, we have a certain industry which are very hungry to export our goods. If our expert, you know, all our imports, it means our economy will grow. Yes? You know many examples like Japan, Korea, and many other countries who are you know, export-oriented countries. And you know for the last 20, 30 years how lifestyle changed there. Becoming one of the poorest countries among them, now became one of the richest. It's because of globalization. Efficiency gains from trade. In our following the, you know, uh, lectures, we will talk about international trade where we will discuss it in more detail. International trade gives us opportunity to practice our absolute and comparative advantages in the world. All right? Maybe Uzbekistan has absolute advantage in producing cotton, let's say. Maybe China has absolute advantage in textile, okay? But some countries, they do not have absolute advantage in anything. But they have what? Comparative advantage, okay? We David Ricardo introduced, all right? These things we will discuss, good. Growth in knowledge and innovation and transfer of such knowledge to developing countries. Let's consider an example of iPhone. When I was a student like you, it was the time when the first, you know, that smart iPhone was introduced. First iPhone. When Steve Jobs went to the stage and introduced the smartphone that showing that this is, you know, capable, you can do it with your fingers, okay? All people were shocked how it was possible. It was, you know, breakthrough in smartphone business, okay? Oh, everyone was shocked. How is it possible? And what happened after a few months or after a few years, one or two years? Immediately, Korean phone makes a Samsung LG, they started producing smartphones. Thailand, HTC, they started smartphones, and many others, they started producing uh, those smartphones. Thai screen phones, okay? So, Steve Jobs. Before introducing that iPhone to 
the nation, okay? Maybe he spent, and his team, okay, spent so many years to figure out how to do it, how to make it. And he spent for that research for the billions of dollars, maybe, all right? And because of that, all of the financial and the physical effort and mental effort, they were able to produce it. What about other countries we may think? Did they spend that much you know, efforts, mental or whatever, financial? No. They easily imitated it. Okay? So therefore I could always you know, argue that these guys are imitating our product. So in macroeconomics, when you will study, you will witness that developed, con developed countries grow slower compared to developing countries. On average. So we think developing countries grow faster than developed countries. One reason, the main reason is this one. They slowly invent and implement. Developing countries, they see, immediately to buy that technology and implement and grow fast. Okay? Grow fast. Facilitate faster growth. Once these efficiencies are a practice, it is natural that economy will grow. Okay? Look, too independent to engage in war. Too interdependent, sorry, interdependent to engage in war. Let me give you another example. Uh, do we have students from China? From Japan? We don't. Okay? So the, the, I want to bring the, the case of Japan and China, right? Chinese people, you know, and I, I know it from my you know, education background, I had many Chinese friends, okay? they uh, dislike uh, Japanese people. Okay? Because of that historical event that happened, right? In the early 20th century, you know, Japanese you know, quantum army, they uh, conquered China, and there were lots of killings happened, and many other things, yes? Because of that reason, Chinese people do not like them. Right? Okay. Now, at that time, Japanese army, Japan used to be one of the superpowers, quantum army. And now you compare Japanese army today with Chinese army today. It is uncomparable. Okay? Chinese, now they are, they are considered to be superpowers. They are now not only have a lot of you know those military equipment, they are producing it. Very strong. Question. Can they invade Japan? Yes. I think so. Will they invade Japan? The question is no. Okay? They will not. Because they are smart enough and they know the danger of invading Japan. If they send one missile to Japanese island, okay, Americans will send two missiles to Chinese land. Okay? The one reason is that let's say even you know America having a very bad relationship with Japan, still China will not invade that country. Why? Because in 1945, when Japanese lost war, they signed peace agreement, demilitarization. Okay, from that, so now you know they have army, but very small. It's not army. Okay, so in every, the entire world, they acknowledge that Japanese from now on they are not a more dangerous nation. All right, if let's suppose. Japanese, they did it and did start the war with them. You will see the next day, entire world will boycott China. They will stop trading. They will pull the investment from that country, which means Chinese government will suffer economically. What happened in Russia a few years ago? You know that Russian government, so they annexated, right? Annexated, or they, uh, according to uh, the Different opinions exist. They took back Crimea, yes? Western countries did not like it, yes? And they imposed what? Sanctions. Because of that one, Russian economy was hit so bad. Interdependent. 
So therefore, if today you want to invade a weak country, all the nations will not give you to practice globalization. Okay? Which means globalization gives you safety. One. And another thing. What about anti-globalization? You know, there are groups they really fight against globalization. Alright? And first one is inequality. Because globalization, you know, the basics is building on capitalism, building wealth. More, you know, entrepreneur, you know, shift you know, capability you have, richer you will become. If you are passive, your life will not change. So therefore, the gap between rich and poor gets bigger and bigger and bigger. One, inequality. Environmental degradation, I think there is no need for you to explain even, right? There are countries, many countries, right, including China and India and uh, many other countries, including our country, some parts, okay? Because of international trade or international investment, our natural resources are exploited. Trees are cut, yes? Mineral resources, you know, they, they, they are extracted, you know, without any care, without any care. So what those interested bodies do, they will give us our cash, get every, you know, the, you know resource that they need, and just leave behind all trash. Loss of cultural norms and values. Uh, you know what, in front of that IB building, what is, what are they building? Yes. I have it. Why? I have it. Okay? Maybe sometimes you are very proud uh, to my while talking with your friends, you know, in front of our university soon we will have them that get that KFC. Good for having lunch. Okay? So, but in some countries, in some countries, they are fighting against what? Americanization or westernization. China, for example. They are trying to close up certain, you know, the American brands because people are becoming too American. Uh, do you watch Korean dramas? I think you all did, right? And what about those historical dramas? You know, all you know, traditional clothing on any years ago, and they, they, why do they do it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and they are doing it, you know, more and more, you know, that type of drums are produced. It's the only way, you know, they want to revive their culture, to remind their people, it's like a propaganda to keep reminding people about their culture. If you forget your culture, it means you forget about yourself. It's important. Okay? Unfair trade, trade conditions. Unfair trade conditions. While trading, okay? Even though there is WTS, TO, World Trade Organization, there are strict rules and regulations. You cannot find any country that, you know, they, that follow 100% of to those rules and regulations. There are many countries because of unfair trade, they are losing. And dependence on others. Once you know we are very open to globalization, we also depend on other countries. For example, if you consider China, they are, I believe, you know, very important part partner for our country. Uh, you know, our president himself, he visited China many times, right? Within this, the last two years. Uh, and of course, among those agreements, there are many, you know, the economical agreements, okay? I believe in our production industry system, dependent on what? Chinese raw materials or technologies. I don't want it to happen and I just suppose that relationship between China and Uzbekistan, you know, became too bad. So there's these two countries, you know, stop buying from each other and stop, you know, any relationship. Which means 
the next day you will feel that effect, okay? Our, those producers who were using those Chinese goods, cheap goods, they will not be producing anymore. It means there will be a high level of unemployment, people will, will not be able to buy, to buy those cheap goods anymore, okay? Those things depend. All right. This person is Muhammad Yunus. He is a you know, Nobel Prize winner, economist, from Bangladesh, all right? This person, he did such a significant contribution to the lives of people in Bangladesh, you know, he was able to reduce the level of poverty significantly. You know, um, I think that Bangladesh, the area of Bangladesh, Bangladesh, I think two times or three times smaller than Uzbekistan, okay? But the population is, you know, maybe five times more than us. Two hundred Okay? More than I think five times, about five times more than us. You can imagine how dense that country is. Therefore, the poverty level was also very high, and it was that this person was who introduced microcrediting, and he improved many people's life. Alright? And he gives one very beautiful statement about globalization. Okay? Global trade is like a hundred lane highway crisscrossing the world. If it is free for all highway with no stop lights, speed limits, size restrictions, or even lane markers, its surface will be taken over by the giant trucks from the world's most powerful economy. What are you saying? If all countries in the world are 100% per open for globalization, okay? He says, those big, richest countries will be benefiting the most, okay? Those superpowers who became already superpower will become even more superpower, okay? He is, no, good. Of course, there are exceptions like China and India who did very good job using the globalization tool. All right, there are three main components of globalization which you must know. First one is international trade, international investment, and international migration. Usually, international trade and globalization, you know, they come you know, hand in hand, always, and investment. So now, we will discuss each one by one. So international trade, you know, what, what the meaning of trade, you know, when you know, there is a buyer and seller, they exchange goods and services, right? There are two parties, because it's international, so now it's not two parties, but two countries, yes? Okay. Of course, we trade when we have mutual benefit. We are buying from Chinese because their goods are cheap, it's good for us. They are selling, they are good for us, because they like the price we offer. Okay? So look, in third statement is important. One third parties are included. It is clear that trade can create winners and losers. All right? Once the number of com competitors or sellers, you know, then conflicts will arise, trade issues, and some other issues will arise. Okay, winners regarding trade. Individual and country from trade. If country expert, experts move, it means the individual will become richer as a whole country will become wealthy. Look, second, access to a large variety of goods and services. For example, I was born in a small rural village. And I grew up there. And I used to see those bananas only on TV. I tried banana first time in my life, maybe at the age of 17 or 18. When I came to Tashkent, it was my first visit at time. Okay? But what about today? Bananas are available everywhere. Okay, it's the beauty of Great. Now we are wearing so many types of clothes. For example, during Soviet Union, it was a very close country, right? 
even you know that Western brands were you know not allowed to be sold in the Soviet territory. At that time, you know those jeans, sky blue jeans, were so trendy. Okay, if you have that jeans and walking into the outside, everyone, wow, the guy is very cool. <laughs> that girl is very cool. Okay, it was like this. So therefore, people were willing to offer you know entire salary. 10, 20 times more expensive than you know, ordinary you know, pants, but it was not available. Okay? Lower prices because of competition. And another one, encourage domestic producers to keep improving the quality of their goods while keeping prices low. If there is good. So globalization does not, or it is like against monopoly. Okay? Monopoly. So now, if you are open, if you re remove carriers from any cars, yes. the next day the prices of GM cars will go down. And they will try to improve the quality. Why? Because they, if they don't do it, they will go bankrupt. Okay? They will improve quality at the same time. At least they will keep the same price or they will go low. Access to physical capital. Access to physical capital. So now you visit any companies in Uzbekistan, okay? And you check their you know, robots or technologies they use. And check the origin. Where is it made? You will 90% guarantee, okay, you will find they are made here and there. Which means if we were closed up to this point, and we were not trading with any country, our industries would not be this much developed today. Okay? Access to global markets increases export opportunities. If once we open, it's good practice for exports. Economic growth, if all of these are happening, there will be economic growth, better standards of living. Clear. What about losers, individuals, and countries again? There are, because of that unfair trade, unfair trade, or those, you know, exploitation of natural resources, there are lots of people in the world, they are suffering from that, you know, practice of globalization. And countries as well. Compet uh, companies with less competitive power in a global marketplace. For example, let's suppose our government decided today, you go home today, you turn on that you know, Uzbekistan 24 channel, and you know, our government leaders, they came and they said strictly, from tomorrow, we remove all tariffs on electronics. Smartphones, computers, uh, whatever those EVs, there is no tariff anymore. What will happen the next day? Our ITEL will die. Okay? We will discuss this point. So, they will die, which means so many people who are employed in that sector, they will lose their jobs. Job and environmental exploitation, again. Good. So look, economists, they know there are benefits of globalization and there are costs. And they took the scale and put in each scale, side of the scale. Benefits, 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 cost, 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 cost. And they figured out that benefits are much more than costs, okay? What about international investment? I think you know. The meaning of international, we have time to work, they are late, okay? International investment, so regarding international investment, it's acquisition of assets in different countries by different nations, right? And you know, foreign direct investment is the most popular among them. Good. Cassim did this example. Do you know this guy, this person? Ali Shavis, Mono, Russian oligarch, very successful rich businessman, right? So you know, the recent years he's 
you know, donating and investing a lot to our country, which is good. We are proud of him. Okay. Question. What will be the outcome of Alisher Usman's decision to invest in the tourism sector in Uzbekistan? You know, our president himself is now, you know, it's like motivating motivate for people that now we have to improve tourism sector. It's very important, profit making sector. Let's say he decided to invest billions of dollars. Are they winners and losers? If you compare winners and losers, okay, the number of losers is close to zero. Because they will be building roads, rebuilding all the stuff, new jobs, okay, more restaurants, blah, 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 more jobs. Good. And second case, let's suppose the Korean one that they decided to bring FBI into Tashkent and open their, you know, that set down car production. They want to establish that line. They want to produce those set down cars. As people in Tashkent, they will be very, very happy. And entire Uzbekistan will be very happy, except minorities in Andijan. Okay? Why? Because of competition with this Hyundai, they will be losing competition and they will make it drop off the plug off. So this is the case, okay? Regarding Daewoo, I think you heard about this brand, right? yes. Daewoo is Korean brand. Right? When they moved in 2000, in 2000, they were experiencing financial difficulties that stakeholders of the company, they decided to sell the company. All right? But when people heard about that, they went outside and they you know, strike against those guys and said, you are not allowed to sell because it is now Korean property. It represents Korea. Why are you selling to GM? So then they stopped, did not sell. Then after one year, they were still, and people, they saw with their own eyes that they was going into bank. Then they changed their mind, oh, now you can sell. Okay? International migration, because now transportation costs are very cheap, people easily can go, and there is a lot of information how to go to work and travel, or the goes in and most of people are going here. Let's suppose this guy, I don't know, maybe from one of these Asian countries, you know, he is doing very hard labor. Okay? And maybe he is earning you know, half a dollar per hour. Maybe he can do this job until he loses his physical power for the rest of his life, okay? You know, what one way he can do, approach? Migration, yes? People, they search for job. And I was very lucky enough to find this picture which is similar to that time. So this person is in the United States or okay, in one of the fields, the strawberry field, you know, doing you know very light job, picking up strawberries, clothed very nicely and earning ten dollars per hour. Is there any difference? Very big difference, okay? So globalization by Ikama, globalization, people can improve their life. Okay. These all of these you know trade, migration and investment investment. They are interconnected with one another. During seminar, we will talk, okay? So look, as a whole, as a whole, world top 1%, the richest people, they gain the most from globalization. And middle class, losers, we will discuss it, okay, in rich countries, upper and lower middle class, due to migration, and lowest class in developing countries. All losers, all winners. For example, because of globalization, now we know around the world we have certain type of disease like AIDS, yes? It's spread because of globalization, okay? Or we have regarding so many other things, or global, you know, climate change. All winners, we have so many, you know, technologies that makes our life easy, okay? So, I will lecture up to this point. The following slide is about GDP. 
which you must read at home. Okay? You must read everything I will ask you in the seminar. Okay? I will ask about this stuff. And so this is a reference. First book is not available in the library, but I scanned it and uploaded it to the internet. Lecture, seminars, and others. You open others instead. Okay? Thank you very much.